Hey guys, how's it going? So for today's video, I thought it'd be cool to take a look at every resume I've had that I've used to apply for jobs. Some got me decent jobs, some got me great jobs, and some failed miserably. Also, a lot of you send me your resumes to review. Um, I'm very thankful for your trust that you've put on me, but unfortunately, I have no time to review resumes anymore. But hopefully, this video will help you get an idea of what good resumes look like and what bad resumes look like because trust me, I have some pretty embarrassing ones as well. As I go through my own resumes, having the experience I have now, I will also look at them from the perspective of a hiring manager and point out things that I did well and things that I did not do so well. And since I have resumes from different stages of my own career, uh, from freshman in college to senior engineering positions, you should find an example that fits your own experience level. Also, you'll hopefully see how my own resumes have changed and matured as I have gained more experience as a software engineer. But before we get started, I wanted to quickly announce the winner of the Keychron K3 keyboard giveaway from my M1 Max MacBook Pro desk setup video. And the winner is Daniel Rosenthal. Daniel, please send me a DM on Instagram at engineeringwithutsav so I can get this shipped to you. Congratulations. All right, let's get started. All right, the first resume I have over here is actually not used for any application per se, but it was the first ever resume I've ever written in my life. It was, I think, for my freshman year in college. Um, this one's quite embarrassing. Um, if you look at the education section, that's straightforward, that's pretty good. You've listed your anticipated graduation date and your GPA, that's cool. But for the work experience, if you go through the work experience, the first work experience I have is a marketing and ad advertisement chair, website designer and administrator for like an intercultural programs office. Then the second one is website designer administrator for a band. The third one is graphic designer for a band again. Um, and then the fourth one is website designer slash administrator for a bank. Um, and so if you look at all of those, it sounds like I am looking for a graphics design or a marketing position. There's nothing in the work experience that actually tells me I'm remotely interested in software engineering jobs, right? So that's a fail. If I recall correctly, I always had this thought that work experience is always greater than projects or things like that. So I used to think everybody has worked on projects. Of course, you're in school, you're going to work on projects. but. Not everyone has four or five different experiences, but when you're looking for a specific job of a specific category, you should um, definitely highlight the projects you're working on, the courses you have taken, rather than work experience that's absolutely not related uh, to your position. You know, um, you can include it as a side or other work experience if you have space, but definitely not as like the main point. And then the funny part is other activities. I've been playing guitar for about 10 years. Like, who cares? <laughs> that's... Um, Funny. I wouldn't even look at this resume if I was if there was a candidate maybe sophomore year looking for an internship because I think this is incorrectly classified as an engineering resume. I think this is for like a design position. So definitely list out the projects, your coursework, and then if you have some extra space, you can list out the rest. And let's look at the second one. The second one is after I graduated my undergrad, and I remember I used this resume to apply for like over 50 companies. And if you wanna get an indication of how good this resume is, I didn't hear back from any of the 50 plus companies. So let's see why. Um, again, the education here looks good. For work experience, this is somewhat relevant than the previous one. I've listed an internship I did, uh, and then I've we founded a company that was kind of uh, a business designed to help homeless children. So that was kind of it's a good thing to list out. And then again, I have this intercultural programs office things where I was like an advertising officer. Not relevant, not necessary, right? And even with the job description for software engineering intern, it's very generic. It's like, I've, looks like basically I've copy pasted what the job listing had said, right? Um, doesn't say what I accomplished, doesn't really given any indication of the impact I made or you know anything like that so it's very generic I wouldn't be too enthused about this again this resume has no listing of any of the projects for a fresh graduate no projects listed 
no um, coursework listed. So it's just work experience first, right? And I, I think I was still in that mentality of work experience is above project and um, courses, which is not the case clearly, never heard back from any of the companies. So but if you look at the computer sk skills area, you look at the languages and then internet technology is HTML, CSS, right? Like, I, like what does that even mean? And then database, okay, I've got some databases there. And then it says operating systems. This is the funniest thing you'll ever see. Operating system is Windows 98, NT, XP, Vista, and Linux. Like what the fuck, you know? <laughs> sure, you know, I, I don't even know what to say, seriously. This is like utterly embarrassing. And then there's packages. I don't even know what packages means. And it's like Word, Excel, PowerPoint, front page, Outlook, Visual Studio, like who cares, you know? This could totally be just one line of skills. This is clearly showing inexperience where you think you know a lot because you've gone to college and you've been using computers for all these years and you know how to code and all that. And it shows some naivety in a sense where I think I know what I'm doing. I kind of have an idea that I'm pretty decent at coding and I just assume that I should get a job just because and it sh looks like I've just thrown shit out here and expect people to just hire me and that's not the case you know nobody knows you from this resume so when I look at this this just looks like someone who thinks they know but they don't know anything because there's no indication in this resume that tells me that you know anything about coding you know the next one I think is like a slight improvement this is after I graduated my master's which I think I used to apply to like six companies some of them were like Groupon, Epic Systems, ThoughtWorks and a few others around Chicago because I lived in Chicago then and I think I got like three or four offers so this this was an improvement so the thing is this is the entire first page if you look at this like who has time to read this resume like I don't know if I just read this word to word it would probably be longer than this entire video you know that is just again like think of this I'm graduating grad school at this time and I still don't know how to write good resume so don't feel bad but the funny thing is this is two pages so if i look at the back this has research experience so then analysis of information propagation within social networks that's a good study i remember we got i got data from facebook because they used to give you real data anonymized data if you are doing independent research and we had a good data set and i worked with graphs and how information prop propagates and biases and things like that that's a great thing to put up front you know and then academic projects i have some good ones here like classroom cricker is a distributed service that's simulated a student response through a CLI project integrated message queuing system which is like a good project to work on for grad school right and I remember we did this in grad school and then a restful caller ID system shows that you're used to uh, web APIs and what rest is and things like that so like if I were to redo this I would actually put the back of the resume in the front and then just get rid of all the other work experience seriously like that's irrelevant we've got two more resumes to look at and five resume writing tips to follow but before that a quick message from today's sponsor, ARC, who are also quite relevant for the topic of software engineering careers and resumes. ARC is a smart remote job search tool that aggregates remote jobs from all around the web and shows you the most relevant ones for you. They also have a remote developer career community to help you land a job even faster. ARC is designed for software developers from mid to senior level experience who want to work remotely. You can also skip the upfront hassle and fast apply directly to ARC's trusted hiring partners. Speaking of resumes, one awesome new tool they have just added is their resume builder, which is completely free to use, create, and download. It can help you create a clean ATS friendly resume format to ensure that you get seen by recruiters. It also has guided resume tips to help you showcase your skills and experience. All you have to do is upload your current resume. It will take care of auto-filling the right areas and also give you pro tips to improve your resume. You can then export your new resume to begin your job hunt or just get matched to one of the positions from their huge catalog of more than 20,000 active job listings. So whether you're interested in a remote software development career or just want to improve your resume, give ARC a try. Visit arc.dev to get started. Let's move on to the next one. So this is, I think when I was uh, applying to a few companies, I think I applied to Amazon, Microsoft, Google, and a few other companies with this resume and got a couple offers and some of them were pending, but I decided to go with one of the companies. But um, so this one's vastly improved. If you look at it, it's way constrained, made smaller. Um, I must have 
figured out finally how to write good resumes, but let's look at the content. So it says software developer, and then it's just three lines compared to 10 lines each position before. It says developed a web-based app that compiles real-time promotional offers, wrote Bayesian classifier that consumes real offer-related data through major social networks and predicts their usefulness. Prediction model achieved accuracy in the upper 80%. Uh, migrated legacy code, blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's good. And then for the same job that had 10 lines before, implemented interfaces that perform data conversion. Done. Uh, led UI design, prepared wireframes and mockups. Perfect. Three lines and we know exactly what you did, right? And the same kind of theme continues with the rest of the work experience to a point where not only is the resume just one page, it's also constrained. And then I have technical skills, which I have programming. I've even listed the code, uh, the languages I know. I've also added like how many years I've worked with it, which is also a good thing if you don't have. I mean, at this point, I have like, two, three, four years of experience, right? So it's good to show the experience because I've worked on many different things. So that's not a bad idea. Uh, web framework, so you put that version control, I'd still remove it, but whatever. And then testing, okay, it shows that you've used testing framework. And then the last one is education, perfect, because now I have like about a year, year and a half of experience or two years of experience. So work experience now goes on top, projects, then skills, education. This, this seems good and no wonder it got selected for a couple of good companies, right? So as you can see, like it's like the thumbnail of a YouTube, right? Like your resume is your thumbnail of a YouTube video. I can put the best content out there. If the thumbnail is pretty crap, nobody's gonna click on it. And if nobody clicks on it, nobody's gonna watch the video. So it's useless, right? So think of your resume as your thumbnail. Would you put an essay on your thumbnail? No, it needs to be attractive, catchy, but not lying, right? Because if you lie in a thumbnail and people go in and it's completely different video, then people will hit dislike and leave, right? Like, so it's a, it's a skill where you want to show the best thing that highlights your content, uh, but also make it attractive and enticing for people. And that that's resumes, exactly. The final one is, this is from this year actually, early this year when I was reapplying for a job after I took a one year break. And I applied to a bunch of companies then, Facebook, Uber, Google, Microsoft, and some couple of smaller startups. Got rejected by a few, got a few offers uh, from startups and uh, bigger companies. So this one clearly worked as well. So. One of the main difference you'll see in this resume is how simple and less verbose it is, right? It just says senior software engineer designed and implemented serverless SOA for scanning services, a customizable linting tool that helps developers create better websites for providing feedback and best practice guidance. Done. Um, led a team of four software engineers to prototype and develop parts of a CI system. Clear, done, don't need to see anything other than that, right? Architected and developed build infrastructure that ran around 200 million tests each day, built various tools, blah, blah, blah. So just that, you see, like it's giving you exact data for making it quantifiable, right? Like if you build anything that runs 200 million of anything in a day, that is somewhat challenging. So anybody that knows what they're doing kind of already immediately gets an idea about, ha, huh, this is interesting. I'm gonna to talk to this person or probe on this side of things. And if you've actually built those, that's a good conversation, you know? And you can talk about the challenges you faced, how you did it well, maybe where you struggled, you know? And then it even says, uh, build various internal tools and services to optimize developer efficiency, saving the org 150 plus hours, dev hours, uh, per month right like that's like interesting like if i read that i'll be like wow that's a lot of uh, resource savings you know i'm curious to find out what happened more so remember the thumbnail idea where i gave you a quantifiable number and i'm making a claim here so that you get interested and curious in following up with me in an interview so this is more reasons for the person to say hey this guy sounds like an interesting person let's bring him in and we will talk about it it's not gonna make you make them believe that you have done so many epic things you know but it gives you the benefit of doubt like hey this looks interesting uh, let's bring them in because i want to chat more with this person right um that's what you want out of your resume of course i mean if you lie on it then you're kind of fucked but if you're honest about it then that's good right uh, and then you can continue seeing like say like the same startup that i've been putting since my second resume right like now look at how it's changed over time designed and developed the backend infrastructure and the mobile app for an online marketplace focused 
on making custom hard to find meals and food items available to users on demand. Worked closely with the CEO to get venture capital backing and raised an initial seed of around $750,000 at a pre-money valuation of about $5 million. You see how quantifiable that is? I told that we did this, this is the area we worked on, this is exactly what I worked on, but we were effective enough to not only get the seed, but value the company at $5 million, right? And then everything else is reduced. It's just languages and frameworks. I've mixed them now. No operating systems, no Git and all that, because the assumption is that you kind of know all that already, right? And then I also like adding a blurb about myself just to give a personality of myself. You know, sometimes people may just click. So don't, don't feel bad about going out and throwing a little bit of personality out. Talk about yourself, you know, like that not only breaks the ice so well that if you're a candidate, it makes you so much comfortable in an interview situation because that rapport that you build immediately when you have something to connect with the interviewer is phenomenal. So, all right, those were all my resumes. So what are the key takeaways from looking at these different resumes? First, if you are within one, two years of your school, undergrad or graduate, your academic and side projects should come first. They are much better indicators of what you have recently worked on and what level of your development skills are than just listing out random jobs that may or may not have to do anything with engineering. Second, unless you have over a decade of experience, there is no reason for your resume to be longer than one page. In fact, if you notice, my resume got even shorter and shorter since I cut out a lot of extra stuff and had only the most important and relevant bits as I got more experience as a software engineer. Third, this kind of follows up on the second point, your descriptions need to be short and on point. Don't make the mistakes I made. No one has time to read an essay for each of your positions. Remember that resumes only get seven seconds of time before they're passed on. So you need to get to the point right away. One, two lines of precise description is more than enough. Four, mention your stack for each work experience or project. This shows the stack you have used and what parts you have touched throughout the project. And finally, don't just describe your job duties straight from the job listing. Write what you've accomplished. Provide data points that are quantifiable. And that's all for today. But I do have a video where I critique a bunch of your resumes that you sent me over. So if you haven't already, do give it a watch because that video also has a bunch of tips for writing great software engineering resumes. As usual, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button and let me know if you have some extra tips for resumes in the comments below. And while at it, subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell icon so you don't miss any of the software engineering content I post on YouTube. If you have any questions to me directly, hit me up on Instagram at Engineering with Utsa. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.